now you can have your seats. Uh, can you give us John 4, uh, verse 20? Our fathers watched from this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe in me, the hour is coming when you will neither know on this mountain nor in, in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such out to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who we call Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you, I am he. And at this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman, yet no one said, what do you seek? What do you seek? Or where are, where are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the, to the men, come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. I want to welcome uh, Sir Charles. Please come and uh, proceed from here. No, sorry. Oh. Come and see the man who raised above all kinds of prejudices and passed through Samaria. The city of Saika was his destination. Could he be the Messiah? Come and see the man who patiently sat beside Jacob's well in the heat of midday. He who gives rest needed rest. But he had to wait for the Samaritan woman and outcasts among the outcasts as she came to draw water at an odd time of the day. Come and see the man who had a chat with the Samaritan woman. A woman who could find herself in perfect company with Rahab and Delilah. A woman who could charmingly chat with men. A woman with a tongue to twist, sacred dialogue to sarcasm. Could he be the Messiah? Come and see the man who showed the Samaritan woman unconditional love. He requested from her a drink of water, even though he is the source of living water. Could he be the Messiah? Come and see the man who gave the Samaritan woman an offer she couldn't refuse. He gave her the living water which quenched her spiritual thirst, transforming her from a prostitute to an evangelist. Could he be the Messiah? Come and see the man who loved his disciples like his own children, who treated his disciples like family and gave them eternal inheritance. Could he be the Messiah? Storms, seas obeyed him. Blind obeyed him, and their eyes were opened. Deaf obeyed him, and their ears were unstopped. Dumb obeyed him. Their tongues were loosed. Lepers obeyed him and were cleansed. Dead obeyed him and they came back to life. Yes, he is the Messiah. Emmanuel, the river, the word of God, the son of God, the holy one of God, the lamb of God, the light of the world, the rabbi of rabbis, the way, the truth, and the life. Indeed, he is the savior of the Jews, the Samaritans, and the entire world. He is the mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. Be blessed. Amen. Come see a man. Today, 
all of us as we came. That is the invitation. Come see a man. A man who changes destinies. And today you are in for your destiny to be changed. The one who changed the destiny of the Samaritan woman from being a prostitute to a renowned city evangelist. She played in the leagues of Reinhard Bonge. She played in the leagues of Billy Graham. She played in such like leagues. You are also being invited to play in that league. Amen? I know we have many people who have joined us today and may be here for the first time. And it's also possible that uh, we have visitors in our midst. I'm Charles Skuku. I'm saved this morning. Christ is Lord of my life. I'm married. And Ross Sikuku is here. And I know we also have our nation is around. Can they be, yeah, I see Ami somewhere waving, where is Joe? Uh -huh. any, any other nation who may be around? Any other nation? Okay, probably they, they may be joining us as we move on. The other day we were also blessed that uh, now I've been a father for some time. But now I'm playing in another league, a league of grandfather. We thank God. So that is the doing of the man that you, I'm inviting you to, that he does what he does the best. And thank you, a Bishop, for this opportunity to share the word of God today, thank you, Pastor Alice. Thank you, the leadership of the whole of, of, of the DCIKC. And indeed, those of you who have come. For us, this is a, a great day. A day that the Lord has made. And we purpose to rejoice in it. I remember when I was praying almost after just after midnight, I was, I, uh, the Spirit reminded me that this is celebration service. So I want us to say that this is the day that the Lord has made we shall celebrate. Say we shall celebrate. You came to celebrate. Yes, you came to celebrate and we will see very shortly why. My, the topic of my message is but the hour is coming and the hour is now. So I've already given you one of it. The hour is coming to celebrate and the hour to celebrate is now. If we look at Revelation 10, 5, 6, why I want us to be in the moods of celebration, NIV fashion, please. Celebration, uh, NIV, uh, Revelation 10, 5. Then the angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven. And he swore by him who lives by forever and ever, who created the heavens and all that is in them, the earth and all that is in it, and the sea and all that is in it, and said, let's pause there, and said, we have, our topic is, but the hour is coming, and the hour is now, what it means what you've been waiting for, what you've been looking forward to, 
and you've waited for quite some time, I came to say the last part of it, that there will be no more delay. There will be no more delay. Appointments, no more delay. Marriage partners, no more delay. Promotions, no more delay. Ministries, no more delay. Children, no more delay. Flying out, no more delay. And that is the message for today. That there will be no more delay. So those who have been thinking of flying out, I remember the first time when I was to fly out, Rose will tell you how many times I did rehearsal. How I bought a box and I, I used to walk around. I tell her now, I'm walking the street far away from you. Look at me. And Rose would say, but you should not walk like that. You change the style. Then I could change the style. And because there was the delay had now come to an end. So you should sit like one who is ready to, to take off. To take off. To be employed. To be promoted. To become a father. To become a mother. To become a grandfather. To become a grandmother. To become no more delay. When one looks at the story of the Samaritan woman in John 4, 1 to 42, you will realize as you read that there are seven, the, the term father is referred to seven times. Seven times. Five times with capital F, meaning God. And two times with small f, meaning here and between us. That tells me that fatherhood is both vertical and horizontal relationship. And the waiting is towards God. How you are related with God determines how you relate with people, how you relate with others, how I will relate with Rose as her husband, and how Rose will relate with me as her wife. So when Jesus Christ passed through Sijar, the city in Samaria, it convinces me to know that he went to address the totality of fatherhood. How people related with their God and how people related with, with each other. How about in our nation now? Increasing cases of teenage pregnancies. Increasing cases of women headed households, with the exception of that, those who are headed by widows. Increasing cases of rape and defilement. On Saturday, it was reported a father in El Marakwet defiled his daughter of four years. Riots in our learning institutions, particularly those of our, the boy child, domestic and gender-based violence, election violence, mushrooming of small parties and small churches, you can mention as many as you can. And when we look at what's happening in this country, much attention has been given to COVID pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, national rising national debt much of it has been given to constitutional change through pbi process but today we are saying time has come time is now to address fatherhood in in society through the question where are the fathers do we have fathers in the house do we have fathers in the house? 
I imagine it's not just Dan alone, it's not just John alone, but there must be fathers in the house. Fathers can only be in two places. Fathers can either be in the city, in, no, in, in the street, or they are in the home. They are in the home. And fathers in the street do the following. Fathers in the street are in drunkenness. Fathers in the street are in bitterness. Or we call them fathers in bitterness. Missing or absent fathers. Indecisive and passive fathers. Adulterous fathers. Selfish fathers. Preoccupied or distracted fathers. I want to read some one paragraph from the book titled Where Are the Fathers? Page 21. Last paragraph it says, One of the greatest needs wives and children have and all the more in our relentless distracting age is the father's countercultural attention. Perhaps more human attention has never been more valuable. Today, the largest corporations in the world no longer compete for oil, but for human attention. And when attention is short and scarce, one of the greatest emerging strategy, tragedies of this new era is distracted fathers. Distracted by what? Technology. And many other the things. When we look at Gen uh, Leviticus 18, 24, 25, it says, and we read slowly, that do not file yourselves with any of these things. What are those things we are talking of? Drunkenness, absentism, bitterness, indecisiveness, adultery, selfishness, and destructions. And why should we not file ourselves? For by all these, the nations who are defiled, which I'm casting out before you, for the land is defiled. And what, which land is defiled? The family land. The national land. And the church land. And what happens when the land is defiled? God visits the punishment of its iniquity upon it. And the land vomits its inhabitants. So you can imagine family land vomiting you, uh, nation land vomiting you, church land vomiting. You know, and, uh, people will be in this church today. They are vomited. They go to the next one. They are vomited. They keep getting vomited. Uh, and without knowing why they are being uh, vomited. So when Jesus Christ took position by the well of Jacob, he, he, his interest was to address the totality of fatherhood in Samaria. And it's that same Jesus Christ who will address fatherhood in our society, indeed in the whole world. It's that same Jesus Christ. And he did it through three kinds of people. He did it through the Samaritan woman whom I gave a new title, the water pot carrier. She carries the pot on her head, I believe. He also did it through his disciples who came to Jesus Christ with food, so the food carriers. Then he did it through the men of the city or the Samaritans minus now the Samaritan woman and these ones are miscellaneous carriers. Miscellaneous carriers carry everything else that has not been carried. Personally, I realized I belong to the water pot carrier. I belong to the uh, food carrier. 
I be, I'm a food carrier, I'm a miscellaneous carrier. Because I knew what the benefits they were. So I wanted to be a partaker of those very benefits. Because this, this you know, the Samaritan woman, when she was going to, 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 to draw water, she never, she, at any one time, imagined she would meet Jesus. But somehow she made Jesus. The water pot carrier made Jesus. If she had not made Jesus, she would have gone back to do all the things that she was, she, she was used to doing. And what was she used to doing? Drawing people's husbands to herself. And that is sexual immorality. So it's possible that one could easily have come in and goes back doing the same things that they are good at, including adultery, fornication, masturbation, incest, homosexuality. And sexual immorality defies the land. And the defied land vomits its inhabitants. But if we focus a little on the Samaritan woman, the Samaritan woman, when she met with Christ, and I alluded to it earlier, she was converted from a prostitute to an evangelist. That's, that is destiny. Destiny has changed. Destiny has, has changed. And then, instead of now drawing people to herself, she started drawing people to God. Evangelists draw people from the world to, to God. Those in sexual immorality draw people to themselves. And you can even see that could become uh, idolatry of, of some nature. And that's why Matthew 9, that 7, 8, talks of there are a few laborers. There are a few laborers to go into the street so that we bring the fathers there. The, the drunk fathers, the adulterous fathers, the selfish fathers, the distracted fathers, assuming they are not here. But if they are here, the work is the same. Amen? I kept on wondering why Pastor Alice, if it was fathers Christ was looking for, why didn't he look for a father? And then the, on the Mother's Day, Professor Kuria gave me an answer. When we were just here, she said, there can never be a Mother's Day minus fathers. So she congratulated me on the Mother's Day. <laughs> Seemingly, there can also never be a Father's Day minus And probably that's why the Samaritan woman was the one entrusted with that responsibility. Because she was simply one of them. She was one of them. The disciples came with food to abort more or less the will of God. Because they wanted to engage Jesus Christ in eating. Of course, those who, who fellowship here know that I'm one guy who believes in eating. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't go to meetings where there's no food. Uh, that, that one is known here. But those who may not, uh, <laughs> that tells you in here we have a lot of food. So you are also welcome to, to eat, to partake of the food. But food business will have, to, uh, will put them candle to cool at the right time. So if these disciples had not been converted by Jesus Christ as they came to him, they would have continued with their food business. And their food business was uh, propagating or fanning the hostility between the Jews and the Samaritans. They were the agents of tribalism. Twelve disciples of Jesus Christ, the closest to Jesus Christ, were the ones propagating tribalism. Bishop, I could be the one who may be propagating the highest level of tribalism, because I'm close to you. Mm. 
But when they met Jesus Christ, they were transformed and they became ambassadors of Christ. They became peacemakers, as we know from the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, 9, which says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Amen? They became peacemakers. How this nation yearns for peacemakers. Particularly when we go, as we are preparing for 2022 elections, how households here yearn for peacemakers, how churches yearn for peacemakers. This lady was able to move out and she called in the fathers. She called in the other Samaritans. When the Samaritans came in, surprisingly, their interest was one. They came to see. The mysterious people come to see. The mysterious come, people come to spectate. The mysterious people come to warm chairs, to warm pews, to warm pages. But when the mysterious people meet Jesus Christ, he converts them into a one people. The other day, Bishop, I was surprised. I, 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 was, I, was, I was being reminded of some song that was sung by Bob Marley. So I kept on wondering, was Bob Marley a, a, a church person? Because he was saying, different colors, one people. <laughs> and yet that is what Jesus Christ went to do in Samaria. To make all Samarians one people. One people. The different colors. One people. If you go to Nepal City in, in Palestine, Nepal City in pa Palestine, which now evolved out of Sichar City, you will find a Greek Orthodox church. So from what Christ began, that time is still there. I'm told it's a religious and a historic site. So even that well is fenced in. People go there. They even think that when they take the water, they get healed. Now that becomes idolatry. That becomes idolatry. But get to know that what Christ began that time is there up to, to now. Up to now. So from the miscellaneous, Christ was able to create one people. And from the miscellaneous, Christ, because it is these men who invited Christ to their homes, so from church, they went to home fellowships. Those who had started their homes, they went back. Those who had started their bedrooms, they went back. They became fathers in the home. The hour is coming. And the hour is now for manifestation of the fathers in the home. Fathers in the home. And who are the fathers in the home? Fathers in the home are prophetic fathers. Are prophetic fathers or vision, uh, visionary fathers. They are foster fathers. They are loving fathers. They are praying fathers. They are nurturing fathers. They are forgiving fathers. Because I know there are fathers who don't forgive. But now because they have come back and made Christ... They now can forgive. They, we also have blessing fathers. We also have generational fathers. We have multiplying fathers. On the day of the fathers, it will be good for us as we finish to get to know what do fathers in the home do. One, 
if one was, you had time to look at John, John chapter 5, 17, fathers are role models. Fathers are role models. They are vision carriers. They show the way for the rest of the family to follow. They show the way. If one looks at John chapter 10, verse, five, uh, verse 9 and 15, fathers in the home are shepherds. They shepherd the families. They feed the families. They protect the families. Those of us who grew up those days, in fact, I was, I was joking with Ian, I saw him enter here. That any time a young chi uh, uh, child, he and they have one who is less than a month old. Any time a kirara and they wake up crying, it simply means you have touched their mother. But when they wake up, when, when they wake up, when they are asleep and wake up, they look like they are smiling, you have touched the father. Because the father is untouchable anyway. Yeah, yeah. When one looks at John 14, John 14, 2, when he, there Jesus Christ was talking of his going to the Father to prepare mansions for his disciples, it's like we get that the fathers prepare their families for the, sake, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because there is no father who would wish to be in heaven and their families are in hell. That is not a father. The third one, fourth one, from John 15, 1, 2. This one is where we are talking of the true vine. Fathers discipline their families in love. We kept on arguing with Rose, what does discipline mean? So she imagined probably I wake up and box. But I know fathers, like Bishop, can just sit there. We had our father, we had our father in, 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 in all level a teacher from uh, Netherlands. And of course, some of us are not the ones you are seeing. We used to be really people. <laughs> so you are in class and noise, people are making noise. This father, a Catholic father could come and only stay at the window and he will not even ask anybody. So anytime you turned and saw him, because it's at night and you know, a, a brown guy or a white guy, so you just keep quiet. You don't even talk to your neighbor. You just keep quiet. Everyone, when everyone is quiet, then the guy goes away. And he will show he's going because he will be using the motor, the, 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 the spotlight. That is the father. Discipline. So it's not necessarily Kenny Ross. When you look at Luke 23, 34, when Jesus Christ on the cross said, forgive them. They do not know what they do. Fathers should inculcate forgiveness and reconciliation in their families. When you look at 2346, where Jesus Christ said, Father, I commit my spirit into your hand. Fathers should commit themselves and their families to God. And then lastly, in Luke 24, 47, 49, I'm rushing because I know books will be there and you can read all these things once. And because it's a heavy book. It's the heaviest book we have ever written, over 300 pages. I realize Kumbi things are around the family. In there, Jesus tells his disciples to stay put until they receive the promise of the Father. He's passing over the baton. So fathers pass over the baton. You see, like my chairman, Peter, passed over the baton to John. That is now you are a father. The message to us on the Father's Day is come to Jesus, the Savior of the world. For it is him who has capacity to create a one household, a one nation. A one church. And there, all of us get healed, all of us prosper, 
all of us succeed. Oh, oh. 